started at 6 o'clock. Hello. We're going to get started. We're missing uh, Mike Blackwell, but he should. Is he coming? Oh. Is he coming? He's standing at the door. I think he wants to get in. <laughs> Ah, that's great. Welcome to the April meeting. Uh, glad to have you. We have, for those of you who haven't been in a while, we have a relatively new looking board. We have three new members. Uh, Michael Klitzing from District 1 is, is here, and Les Wadzinski from District 5, and Laura Schell from District 4. So, welcome to them if you have not been to a meeting since March, last month, I guess. There he is. Mr. Treasurer. I thought the meeting was at the board. <laughs> 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 All right. That was a good one. That was a good one. No, it's not. <laughs> that was perfect. Did you like one? Okay, first uh, order of business is the approval of the March 23rd board meeting minutes. And we'll approve all the uh, 23rd minutes as included in the packet. My second. Uh, it has been moved and seconded. So we approve those minutes. All in favor? Please aye. say aye. 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 Any opposed? I would add, James, that it, uh, public comment, new business, and adjournment were not me as I exited the meeting. They were Mary Jane. Very minor thing. Okay. She ran a hell of a meeting, too. She did. I have heard that about 50 times. <laughs> All right. That's I'm why so I thought it was at the portal. I'm so proud of her. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I appreciated that you did that. Okay. Treasurer's report. Are you? you yes, ma'am. Okay, he's ready. Uh, we wrote uh, 17 checks last month, totaling twenty thousand um, dollars. Adam was kind enough to send me a, a bank statement, uh, just uh, because you know you see in writing that we've got three hundred thousand dollars, but no one ever really sees the bank statement. So the bank statement shows that we have three hundred thousand oh, dollars. That's good. Uh, <laughs> uh, so. Uh, Adam also informed me that the State Board of Accounts has called and they are going to do a five-year audit. Yes, we got a call yesterday, it'll actually be getting Monday, so it'll be an audit from 2011 through 16. Um, so it's going to be a pretty fun week, it'll probably take about four days, we'll be doing that out the accountant's office, and that's where the majority of our financials and statements are, so we'll be getting stuff ready tomorrow and then uh, hitting the ground on Monday. And I said, thank goodness it's not happening your first year uh, at your job. <laughs> now, you're, now you're ready. Uh, necessary evils, I guess, or unnecessary evils. Anything else, Mr. Treasurer? Um, no. If there, and no one has any questions on um, the, the uh, claims uh, for March, um, I would entertain a motion to accept. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, budget timeline. Uh, do you have that in front of you, the budget timeline? Yeah. I'm bringing mine up. Um, it's on the back there. Is it, uh, is it okay? <coughs> oh, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for printing the budget timeline, Adam. Um, uh, Let's see, April uh, 27th um, uh, will be what the, the we will select the, the board budget committee. Typically, it's been the president, the, the chair, the vice chair, and the treasurer. Um, so, and then obviously the manager. So, um, and that's today, by the way. That's today? Yeah, April 27th. So, we need to yeah. uh, settle that. Um, do we want to do that now or go through the entire timeline and approve? Or, well, we probably should do that one at a time, shouldn't we? Do you need a motion to do that? Uh, I don't necessarily think we need a motion, but is, no, if there's a bit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is the consensus good that, that it's okay? All right. I think we have a consensus. Very good. Um, and then from today through June 24th, we would prepare a 2018 budget. Uh, at some time, uh, right after that, you and I would have to meet with uh, our representative from the DLGF. Yes, um, we'll actually get an email for that. We will meet with them. Um, generally, after we kind of get our budget figured out, I think it normally occurs in late June, early July. Early we'll July. With them near the airport. Right. Um, and we'll actually, they kind of upload everything into the gateway system and help us figure all that out. So it's, 
and make it make it as easy as possible. So. Uh, June 24th, we would present the 2018. It would be the first presentation of the 2018 budget uh, at the Riddle Point Park Shelter House. July 22nd would be the first public discussion at the Riddle Point Park Shelter House. August 19th, second public discussion, again at the Riddle Point Park Shelter House. September 28th, public hearing on the 2018 budget, and October 26th, uh, the adoption. So any questions on the... Uh, tentative key dates for the 2018 budget and madam chair i think that concludes my report uh adam will you be looking at the calendar and letting the three of us know what might be our first and uh, second meeting day yeah, we'll, we'll send out some emails and we'll figure that out generally we host two meetings it's kind of a lot to tackle in one sitting so it's yeah. only host two um, kind mm -hmm. of break it up a little bit so we can maybe you could send us some some possibilities i think it's going to get crazy for yeah. everybody so we'll get, get those on the docket okay perfect thank you mike you're welcome but, uh, why, can i ask of why why we have the resolution on signing authority you may not have one he's got one we were told you uh, have well this. okay um if no one has questioned uh, i emailed the board at, at, at um uh, when we were passing emails back and forth on the Indiana Railroad, I said, oh, and lastly, I gave Adam approval to rent a track uh, truck per resolution 315 2 that I will present at this meeting just in case that you want to know how that worked. Uh, the people that were on the board during that time, you know, Dennis Friesel, John Shell, Marty Mann, some of us weren't on the board at that time, okay? okay? So, so this is information. That's just information how that worked. He called or emailed me, texted me, I can't remember, and said the, the possum trot site was too wet to move. Do, can I have approval to rent a truck? And I said yes. Which was okay. amazing, uh, that track dump truck. Thank some you. of the other operations have that, and um, we test that out, and that thing won't go anywhere. Our truck is getting hung up left and right. Um, so as, as our articulated truck ages, that may be something to look into. Um, it was a workforce. What does one cost? Do we know? Yeah, we're looking into that. Probably about $100,000. Um, Is that new or used? Probably it's slightly used. Slightly. <laughs> Gently used. Okay. Well, pre-owned. The wish list grows, yeah, right? Okay. Um, does that complete your treasure? It does report? now, matter. Sure. All right. Uh, next up is the uh, Strategic Planning Committee update. Mary Jane, who's been working very hard amidst lots of other folks working very hard. Yeah, I'm not alone in this. Um, we met last Friday, and we met uh, first and had a nice discussion with Neil Myers from Williams Creek Consulting. And um, Neil has a lot of experience in lake management at, at Lake Tippecanoe and um, is an engineer and we just had it was a nice opportunity to talk to another engineer about the issues that we face and I don't know if there are a couple of you that are on the strategic planning committee if, do you want to say any more about that I mean it was this was a get to know you and meet someone else and Kind of have a, another opinion. Um, it's nice to get his perspectives. He's uh, an engineer at the consulting firm, but he's also in charge of their dredging operation at Tippy Canoe, and uh, has been there since the initiation of that. And was also on their watershed foundation. Um, so there really wasn't a whole lot of talk as far as consulting out and working with them. He kind of briefly mentioned that, but he really went through the struggles they face trying to get everything off the ground, the technologies they use. Um, so it's kind of nice to know that it's, it's not just us and it's universal with the lakes the problems we're facing. Um, so it was, it was really, really um, in, informative, if anything. Yeah, and he may be a resource at, at some point to us. Uh, and thanks to Malcolm McClure for introducing us to him. Uh, we spent the other half of the meeting talking about uh, the final KCI report, which you should all have now. Pam sent it out to everybody on the board. And um, one of the things I think the board needs to agree on this evening is that we're gonna publish that to all freeholders now. And uh, we spent the, at, I didn't finish my first sentence. We spent the rest of the meeting talking about 
the presentation of that, uh, and, and Joe Pfeiffer from KCI will be coming on May 20th, and what the committee decided was to expand that meeting not just to be a discussion about the KCI report and that um, concept study on sedimentation, uh, but to really make it an informa informative, educational kind of meeting for uh, all freeholders uh, to understand what's, where, what's going on with the lake, what are the things we do now, what are the, the issues that we face going forward, um, and not just have the, the KCI report kind of be, a, oh, here's something <coughs> hanging out here, but to kind of try to bring all those concepts together. And um, we are going to, we've scheduled that meeting for May 20th. We agreed um, at the last meeting that that's when we would have Joe come. So uh, we have booked, Adam has booked, I, I'm using the editorial we here. Um, Adam has booked uh, the Showers Building at City Hall uh, Council Chambers uh, for May 20th at 3 p.m. And we're planning uh, a big advertising push to get as many freeholders as possible to attend this meeting. And uh, Malcolm, <laughs> Malcolm McClure has, uh, ha has had a communications idea from the get-go for our committee. And we're going to put it into practice for this meeting. And that, that is, I we should have just brought this over here. We're going to get get yard signs and Malcolm has purchased the holders and um, this is just a mock-up. We haven't agreed on what the, what the meeting flyers will say yet specifically. This may be it, Malcolm, I'm not sure, but um, these will be, there'll be like 15 of them 15 you said, them. and posted around the lake so people can can uh, see them. And then we'll have the holders, which he's donating to us, uh, for other announcements that we want to make as time goes on, That's which cool. I think is nice. Yeah. The other thing we talked about, and this was actually an idea from Neil Myers uh, that they used at Lake Tippecanoe, and that was to do door hangers. And so we're going to order door hangers, and one of the things uh, that I would ask of the board is that each board member take responsibility for distributing the door hangers in their area and if you need help with that I'll, I'll help or I'll find other people because some because for Mike I thought about you you'll be like hitting 90 some doors <laughs> I actually uh, have volunteers <laughs> from our pre-meeting okay. and so but thank you uh, okay we may uh, call but I uh, uh, appreciate that and um, we anticipate, and I didn't do, Malcolm had an estimate from a printer for, for these materials for the yard sign printing and the door hangers, uh, and it would be in the neighborhood of about $500, and I think we ought to, the Conservancy ought to uh, pony, up. pony up the $500. I that. would like to make that motion that we pony up $500 okay. for the so, signs. Yeah, and the, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. All second in, moved and seconded? Okay. Go ahead. No, any go ahead. any no. more discussion no, on the good. motion? <laughs> All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, the door hangers, do that, does the people that get those on their door, do they contact the office with their email address or with their, uh, is that? This is, this is a great time to get updated email address. So that's <laughs> yeah. a really that great idea. idea. I'm, I'm that. guessing that that's what part of that is, is not only is the meeting, but, but also get your name on the list serve or whatever. Absolutely. Okay. We can, we can actually have people uh, do that when they come to the meeting. Okay. Either as way. As well. Both. Yeah, both. Yeah, okay. Both. Yeah. both. And that'll help us a lot with that. Thanks, Mike. Yep. You guys have access to like the most recent addresses too of people, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, we actually just received from uh, the assessor's the office um, for the 2016 tape. 2017. So. We're also inviting, um, this, we also saw this as an opportunity to uh, strengthen our relationships with some of the government and uh, community representatives. So we're, we're going to, I think you've already invited John Langley and Vic Kelson 
uh, from CBU, and I have invited uh, Julie Thomas, who's the Monroe County Commissioner, and Adam and James were talking about uh, inviting some folks from the Soil and Water Cons Conservation Districts in Monroe and Brown County. And if there are others that you can think of that should would be good to be there, um, please please let us know. Uh, mm -hmm. so let's at the end. We'll let's do that at the end. Them. I'm handling Sycamore. Right. What about the and Sycamore, the Sycamore yeah. Land Trust? Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry, Susan. Do we want to ask ah. a member of the press? Hmm. Maybe I thought about that. Or maybe members of the legislature, since the session will be o over, and the, the DNR has um, just passed a Save the Lakes uh, push in Indiana, similar to what they're trying to do in Ohio. Um, I sent that email. That's a great idea. I sent that email out. Um, did you get a copy of that? The Save the Lakes push. Yeah, the DNR. Okay. I'll yeah. send it out again. To, did you send it to the whole board? I don't I didn't recall sending that. I, I, I think I just sent it to Mary Jane and Adam, uh, the Strategic Planning Committee. It was uh, it was with the Ellicott Dredge, the two hundred thousand dollar Ellicott okay. Dredge. Oh, okay. Did I send it to you? You did. Sorry. Yes. I'm. It was at the bottom. Okay. I blew a, I, Indiana DNR pushed to save the lake. I will send it to the rest of the board. My apologies. Okay. It was only to the Strategic Planning, but I will send that. Um, Thanks. I actually talked about that at the Owens conference too um, a couple months ago at Monroe. Um, they're looking at increasing fish habitat, and fishing structures, and then in small little letters, it said potentially dredging too. So. Tiny little letters. But maybe the Brown and, and Monroe County uh, legislators, uh, representatives, and, and senators. Yeah, no, I like that. That's what pushed the DNR program in Ohio. One guy. So we have to move, you know, May 20th is less than a month away now, so we need to move really quickly. And um, I was trying to come up with a theme and have failed so far, um, but I was fooling around on the computer and I came up with a few. I don't know how many of these I made. We, we may have to share. Um, Oh, Any, maybe we should have a contest for what's the tagline. We could do that after the meeting, but for this meeting, we need to. To, um, I think. We want to. We want to express some urgency about what the lake needs are, but I also think that we don't want to scare people. Uh, so. I'm not sure, so let me know what you think of these. But but I think uh, tomorrow I'd like to be able to give Malcolm the text for what should go on the signs and the door hangers. Let me ask you right now then, isn't Joe Pfeiffer going to scare us? Yes, but... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just enough, just enough. Yes, okay. but do you want to frighten people before they get no, to the... No, I, but <laughs> no. I think, I think I, the concern is I, going to be I'm being there. a little... Right. facetious but no I, and that's so but I we want to I think we the committee would like for people to understand the issues we face are serious yes yeah but they are not insurmountable and Correct. That, but they need to be dealt with sooner they need, yeah. they now now is the yeah. time yeah right I keep thinking of that thing that from for those of you who are old enough to remember typing class now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of their lake. <laughs> that's right. So um, that's it for now, and I, I'd be happy to take uh, ideas and suggestions from the rest of you as well as the public about other people we should be inviting. Um, but the meeting itself will include a, a presentation from Adam about kind of the history of the lake, what we do today, um, and then um, Joe's report, and then we'll talk about uh, options for se controlling sediment and, con and containment, and what's the other word that I'm missing, Malcolm? Dredging. Dredging, <laughs> dredging, and that's why I'm looking at you. 
So well, um, I will take care of the legislature. Uh, I have a firefighter uh, that sits on the legislature, Dan Forstall. Okay. And then a retired firefighter that also sits on the legislature. So uh, so. Uh, and Brian Bosman actually is an acquaintance. So I will reach out to them, let them know we're having a meeting, and then I will report back to you. Okay. Um, who may, may or may not be coming. That'd be great. Would that be all right? That's great. Did you have IU on there? Uh, I don't have them on my list, but they are in my head. I, yes, we definitely need to invite people from IU. And, and for those of you here, uh, make every effort to get to this meeting uh, on May 20th. I know May is busy, but, and tell everybody you know to come because it's, it's exciting. This is, we're yeah. on a, a threshold here that we really hope is, is uh, gonna take oh. us to, to new levels. So. It'll be a real opportunity, even for people who've been on the lake for a long time, I think it'll be a real opportunity to put all things in context. Uh, I think we, you know, it's really easy in our daily lives, not just our lake lives, to get focused on, okay, this, this happened, but then to not bring it back to, okay, here's what's been going on for the last 60 years. So. Thank you. That's my efforts. report. Thank you. Very nice job. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Excellent. Okay, Adam, your turn. Manager's report. All right. Um, first off, it's been crazy, the part of the season is officially here. Um, we had nice weather, we've been packed. And sold, starting to sell tons of pass. It's almost one I've ever seen this early in the year, which is a really good thing. Uh, for barge operations update, our disposal sites are ready to go for the year. Um, we rented that, that Maruka track truck that really helped out. Um, I think last year we picked close to 9,000 yards before we had to move any dirt around. Um, and we've got even more open than we did last year, so I do not think that'll be an issue this year at all. Um, just today we finished up our riprap jobs, we did nine riprap jobs, um, all private, and used our entire uh, budget for stone in that, covered a little over 1,100 linear feet of shoreline with stone. We will be starting um, digging this next week, um, a small barge, or the small excavator is supposed to be here by the end of this week, early next week at the latest. Um, we actually ended up going with a company out of Louisville, we are going down to look at a Komatsu dealer. And um, we just happened chance, me and Levi, we see this truck driving by us at Wilson Equipment, who we rented that track truck from. And lo and behold, they were about 200 yards down from the Komatsu dealer, about $1,000 less in price. Um, and the Komatsu, not very impressed. We get there, they just hand us a key. Nobody's out there, not a sales guy, can't answer questions. Um, so we went to this other dealer for, it's a case excavator. And we walk in like, with like a 60 inch addition bucket. We had a hydraulic coupler, it needs to be able to spin around. All this, yes, 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 got it on order, everything. And I was there, great to work with. So I'm, I'm very happy about that. Um, we will be starting right at the beginning. We'll probably have about two days of work at Eidolon um, just to finish up the siltation hole where our silt curtain's gonna be. So my goal next week is to have Eidolon finished up, have the little barge mobilized, and then the following week um, to hit the corner on Little Africa right there and be moving up to Chitwood. Um, so we're looking in the probably about two weeks and we should be, should be digging there. Um, that's a, got a good jump on the season, started nice and early, so we're, we're in pretty good shape. I also have uh, both the crews in, so we've been doing some training. I actually had the backup operators out when we were doing stone and early on to get some more experience, so should be in should be in pretty good shape. I'm really confident we'll be able to have people out there every day as possible. So, so Adam, we're going to be able to spin that bucket and dig? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that was one of our, our biggest things, and that really came down to the coupler type. Mm -hmm. um, so they ordered the coupler we needed, um, got the bucket, so yeah, we can flip it both around. And nice, it, nice work, because we thought you couldn't get a rental that would really do that. Nice. So yeah, we had, uh, as far as we could really tell before, Komatsu was the only one. Um, but then we get down there and start looking at these case tractors, and it worked out, worked out really good. Um, he's a nice guy too. He said if he wants to come in some time and talk about it, they're more than willing to work with us if we like the machine to transfer over to a, a lease to own type of thing. Um, he's talking about municipality financing where we can kind of lease it out over the long term. And once the lease is up, you buy it for a dollar. Um, so he said at any time that we wanted to, we'll come into a meeting and talk about that. So if we like it, I think um, it'd be nice to have him, have him come in. So I'm really Feeling really good about that, and they're, they're really nice to deal with, so it was a good company. Adam, thanks for getting back to the questions that I sent you. Um, one of the uh, 
retracted questions that came back to me, and I really appreciate you getting back to me so soon, was as you go around Little Africa, there's quite a bit of debris. All right. So you'll probably have a lot more debris to pick to clean up to make that turn. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, am I saying that right? Um, anyway, there's there's quite a bit of debris. All right. uh, so you might just get out there and look. Uh, some of the trees have come in from the from the creek. So All right. thank you again for for your when quick we get response. Up, we'll go ahead and make sure we got the thumb on when we start, so it doesn't, doesn't mm -hmm. slow us down at all. Just throw them up on a little Africa there, where yeah, exactly. you got. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Adam. I, and I, I've got a question. But you said that the uh, riprap was private, so there was income, right? Because you said you used up the budget. So I. Just, yeah, I yeah, we budget uh, a certain amount for stone, um, and so that comes. We're spending that money out of the stone budget, whether it's private or LLCD, um, but when we're doing private, we recoup that cost. Yeah. Um, okay. So we actually are a little bit net positive on the pricing for that. Um, okay. So we're, we're able to get stoned down and, and really not, not lose any money on that. Um, so I was, I was happy about that. So okay. as a human resources person, I have to ask, how's the crew? Are they, do, are you happy with them? Are they yeah. reliable? Are they? Yeah, the, um, they've been really good so far. Our new um, backup operator, is from Brown County. He's actually retired a year ago and worked for their wastewater treatment facility. Um, he's the head there, he's been running equipment for a long time. I'm a little bit of a, I don't know, let's say age in the government, but a little bit of an older guy, but uh, very spry. <laughs> um, he's, he's a really nice guy, I like him. Um, every time you call him up, he's right there. And then the other operator um, for the pushbow backup was actually a guy that we used before named Clint Alexander. Um, he's a younger guy, so he's already been kind of seasoned um, with running it. So he, we actually had him come out, and it's easy with him. He can just hit the ground running at the wheels. So good. I think we're looking, looking good. Yeah, feeling, feeling really good about That's it. That's great. Um, moving on to the Little Africa disposal site, I was asked to start looking into uh, what we need to do um, to develop that and starting to get cost. I've spoken with IDEM. Um, essentially, what I want to do is we're given permission before to use some acreage. I figure if we're gonna end up developing this thing, we kinda of wanna maximize what we can do so we don't just build a really tiny site. Um, so talking to item, there is wetlands on the eastern side. They said the first step to do is to come in and do what they called a wetlands reconnaissance to see if they are wetlands there and then do a delineation so we can figure out where we can actually build the site at. Um, I actually had a lady named Sarah come out with vet environmental engineering and we walked the site for free, so that was our reconnaissance. Um, there are, are wetlands there, but they're all on the eastern portion. Um, so kind of where the old plains were on that western edge, um, I think that's where we'll be able to dig at. So really the next step is getting a wetland delineation done so we can see exactly where we can dig. Um, I did include in this a uh, little quote from, from Vet Environmental Engineering. Um, the wetland delineation, she put timing materials not to exceed $5,700. She said it'd more likely be in the $35 to $4,000 range, um, depending on how long it takes. We have $40,000 in the disposal site budget. Um, this would be the first step. And they also do, they're a local company, so they're really nice to deal with. And actually, they have some connections to the lake, too. Her father was one of the founding board members of Hurdle Point Rowing um, oh, Association. Wow. Yeah. Um, so I have some, some ties here to the lake, and they do all the, it's, it's called a SWIFT, but the stormwater and sediment erosion control plans um, that we need for our Rule 5, which is essentially the site design and sediment prevention. And they do all that in-house, too. And another quote that I got what came in at like $35,000 from a big company out of Indy, and uh, she said if they were going to do that, it'd be less than half that. Um, so but, um, I don't know if we want to move forward with that. I mean... We have everything in place, and when we can, when we're ready to hit the button, we can. Um, so I don't know if we'd want to go ahead and just do that wetland delineation now, because then we know we know what's oh, there. Get started on so. We can do. It. I mean, and that's that's laying the footwork and items. So that's our that's our next step that we need to take. Um, what would the, what would be the possible uh, total cost that you're looking at then? They have for the wetland delineation <coughs> um, with the reports. The time and materials not to exceed fifty-seven hundred dollars or fifty-seven fifty. Um, she said more likely it would come in the four thousand dollar range, but she didn't want to surprise with anything, so she went on the maximum end. Okay. Um, but so it's not to see that. So if we want to move forward with that. I mean, that's really the first step of seeing where we can where we can hit the ground. And I would entertain a motion. To, uh, I'll make that motion uh, that we uh, start the uh, wetland delineation process with the company that uh, manager recommends. Uh, 
Not yeah. to exceed 57.50. And I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there some discussion? Anybody want to throw a comment this way? I would say that we're ready to vote. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Very good. Nice work. Nice work, Adam. Yeah, absolutely. And they're local. They're, they're really nice to deal with. And actually, the other price on there was um, they're talking about programs because we have to do monitoring for our disposal sites. And they're really big in the computerizing everything. Um, so that may be something we look at in the future as far as our reporting obligations and that. There's about $80 a month, and we're not quite there yet. But maybe if we go third site. Stay on that subject. Do you want to, so after delineation now, is that going to take like 30 days, and then you'll come back and... It shouldn't take them that long. Um, I think they're pretty much ready to move. I would almost imagine... Would we, would we want to go ahead and talk about a reconnaissance now? Uh, and talk about that, or is that too soon? For the reconnaissance, for the wetland reconnaissance, or is that all? We, we essentially already did the, what the okay. wetland reconnaissance is essentially just says if there's wetlands there, then the next step is a delineation. Um, well, she came out and met with us there, um, and there, so we essentially she saved us the cost of doing the reconnaissance. We are there are wetlands, we walked it, checked it out, um, and we kind of know the general area where there's not wetlands. <coughs> The delineation will take care of all those requirements. So should we talk about the Rule 5 permitting then? or? Yeah, um, we can. I think we, we need to get some quotes for that. Um, okay. Essentially what happens is once we find the site where we can dig, um, we decide how much of it we want to utilize, and we go, we go back to them and they develop what's called a stormwater and um, sediment erosion control plan. And that's essentially the, the site plan with the erosion prevention measures in there. Um, she said that'd probably be around fifteen thousand dollars. I would say once we get this back, we'll look at that. We'll discuss with we'll the DSG, um, have the DSG recommend you know how much of this we actually want to utilize, and then okay, and then move forward from there. Thank you. And whenever we decide to hit the ground, I mean having all that in place. Um, once we have that in place, and know what we're going to do. Once we're ready to go, then just essentially pay for the rule five. And we did just actually get um, our rule five renewed. Had an aha moment the other day. We were talking about disposal sites, and I was like, "Oh, we renewed possum trot in 2015," and started freaking out. I'm like, "Oh, when did Kenny Clark's last?" And I looked it up, and uh, it was like that week I had to renew that. And we actually received our Rule Five for Kenny Clark site last week, so that's good until 2022. Um, and possum trot's good until 2020, so we're looking good there. Thank you. Next up, we have our 2017-2018 Indian University, the water testing scope of work. Um, this is not the actual contract, um, but I think they're kind of, it's been taking a little bit to, to get the contract ready. Um, so they're actually willing to start work before the contract is in place, um, if we approve the scope of work. Um, it's very similar to years in the past. For our in-lake sampling, there's two main sites they sample, um, Mid-Lake, just <coughs> off of Reed Point, and then off of Brittle Point Park, which is kind of east of the islands in the channel area. So those are the two, um, two spots in the actual lake proper. Um, they test for alkalinity, pH, conductivity, phosphorus, reactive phosphorus, uh, which is what the algae can actually use, nitrates, ammonia, organic nitrogen, suspended solids, and E. coli. Um, a couple times throughout the year. They also do, we actually had them, um, the price is actually going to increase um, generally right around $8,000 for the two year. I've actually suggested a few changes and with just cost of their staff going up, we'll be looking at about $10,000 for a two year contract. One of the things I did have them add in was the overflow ponds for lake sampling. Since last year we did have that big blue green algae bloom. Um, it was almost 100% cylindrospermopsis which is a toxin producing algae. There's no toxin present, but it's all potentially toxin producing. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and have them, uh, once we get later in the season, do grab samples in case we start to see those counts going up, we can react in advance rather than having a, a rust collared pond that we have to, have to deal with then. Um, stream sampling, they do Bean Blossom Creek, um, a little bit of the creek, and they also do Bear Creek, where the <coughs> confluence is, so you can see uh, where different um, impactors are coming from. They'll continue to, to test the stream that comes out of Knob Hill and dumps into the marina. I've actually went ahead and threw on, um, I'm gonna have them test that creek coming out of essentially Loveland Farms. Um, it's an ephemeral stream, so there's not always water in there, so I'm gonna have them hit um, storm 
um, occasions when we have high flow, um, so we can actually see the water coli is coming out of the farm fields there and compare it to what's in the lake. So that'll give us a little bit more of a, an idea of how much is coming in, where it's coming from. Um, so they, they will be adding that on. So if you see see them there, they're, they're testing there. Wind. So um, that'll, that water's not flowing that often, so that'll probably be a storm event, probably a little bit later on in the season. You know um, we have a weir in there, correct? Do I? That we have a weir, we have a weir put in there. Yeah, and I was actually, I'm probably gonna have them test um, kind of just on the south, right there on um, south shore, like right where it comes in. I was able to be able to grab it from the side of the road right there before it goes into awesome. When When they test for E. coli, can they tell, Walk. can they tell where, what, what, where it came from? Human or human or human animal. or animal. Thank you, Sue. Not in their lab. They cannot. There's methods that are coming out, um, but we will be able to tell as that's all farmland right there, and it's coming from wooded areas and going into the farmland. So having that pre-shot before it comes into the lake, okay. and then being able to look in the lake itself, we'll be able to kind of tell you know if how many the concentrations are incredibly high coming off there. Well, then you know it has, that's yeah. a big impact, and that's yeah. primarily mm -hmm. um, livestock. So, yeah. so it'll give us a little bit of a way to reference that. Okay. Do you need any action on this now, or just? Uh, I'm just. Um, I guess I have to seek a motion to approve the scope of work. Um, next month we'll have their report and the actual contract. But if we're going to the scope of work, they're actually going to start testing this month. So I have a question. So on the overflow uh, sampling paragraph, um, is there any reason why we shouldn't be doing it in the lake proper as well? Because you might recall last year I, I actually took a sample off my dock, which is not the overflow and took it into the lab because I know um, that I work at SPIA. And they checked it and said, yeah, you know, you got this big algae bloom there. So I, you know, I think we do have evidence that it's beyond just that spot. And maybe mm -hmm. we ought to be checking, uh, you know, in a little more widespread. Well, yeah, and I know they do, um, they do test for the zooplankton density and the chlorophyll. Um, I can have them add in when they're doing that to go ahead and look at the, the distribution of species. And I can imagine that'd be that much. More expensive. I really think it's good to know, and it gives us uh, yeah, a chance to be proactive sense. instead of reactive. Yeah. So I can I think it's a very good point. Lost. I'll go ahead and add them. Add that. Okay. In. I move that we do the um, approve the scope of work. Yeah, thank you. Huh? <coughs> I second. Is that with this change though? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. Slightly expanded scope of work. Yeah. 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 It has been moved and seconded that we uh, approve the scope of uh, expanded scope of work. Uh, any other discussion? Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Um, Indiana Railroad, the Shuffle Creek Viaduct Repair. So we have we have been having the meetings. We haven't met with the city most recently. The, what we're starting to hear uh, from the city is they do believe they are responsible, at least in some part, um, for the repairs, and they're not willing to spend money on options other than drawing down the lake. What this agreement says, we changed it from a drawdown agreement to the viaduct repair agreement. We now have the verbiage in there that says they will be able to start on September 20th with their work. We will guarantee them access by any means that we decide possible, whether it be drawdown, um, damming it, um, doing the coffer dams, but essentially we are on the hook for anything above and beyond a drawdown for financial means. Um, which is, I mean, does anybody else want to weigh in on this? I think it's absolutely true. Um, but we have some time, you know, to, I know you've been thinking about it with your folks. Well, I just asked, um, and uh, John, uh, John hasn't found anyone that will do the call for dams, I guess. Not but. that way. There's the method I was telling you about where you bring in huge bags and fill with water and cordon off what you need. But to do that, you pay a huge mobilization cost. You pay per week as you use those, and we don't know how long that's going to be. And then they, when, for them to come back and pick everything up, there's another charge. So it, it, for that length of time, it doesn't make sense to spend. So what, uh, for a three-week period, it doesn't make sense? 
Because isn't that what they said in the first place that their repairs would take three weeks? They think. Yeah, it's at three weeks. Yeah, if everything's mm -hmm. perfect. If, yes. Yeah. yeah, but just to get an yeah. estimate. Yeah. 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 You're talking yeah. just to have them come in and set up about $10,000. So that's just to get them to come in and set up. And then you're going to pay, I don't know. And then you pay. Per week, but that depends on the how area much? you do and how many bags you need and how big they need to be. And it's just, yeah. It's and based on my calculations, I looked at the revenue that we had from the beginning of September through the end of the year. And it was about fifteen hundred dollars that we made in boat pass sales for that entire portion of the year. Um, it was about seven percent of our boat pass sales, and right about two percent of our overall income. At two feet down, though, our ramp will still be functional. Um, so, on a worst case scenario, we may lose up to and including ten thousand dollars. I highly doubt that'll be that high since our ramp will still be functional. I don't. I believe it may just be a portion of that. The other issue was is um, the real thing will be people doing barge work on the lake, mm -hmm. like us and like Roger. Uh, two feet down, people are probably gonna have to leave everything in the water. Um, depending on how long it takes to come back up, we will probably have the barge out of the water by then. So that's the potential no. impact for lake residents. You know, it just seems though that we're using our tax dollars to do right. maintenance for a for-profit company. And that doesn't seem right. I don't want my tax dollars well, they, going to Apparently the they have line. a contract that, that says they're allowed. they're allowed to do this. Well, but it, based on the 1952 thing, is that what you're talking about? Or? Well, the, yeah, their agreement with the city of Bloomington. Right. Yeah, see, I think we ought to fight that because it, it, it says in there. I'm kind of that, that way myself. Well, I, yeah, I don't I mean, disagree. It's, it talks about the 630, you know, that if we're going to raise the water level or whatever, then it looks like the city's on the hook for that. I, did have, I did have some uh, conversation with uh, Mick Renison, who is the uh, deputy mayor of Bloomington, just to, because I, I have heard this conversation where uh, the representatives from CBU were saying that uh, the city may have responsibility for that. So I'm like, okay, let's find out from the mayor's office if, if they're in agreement with that. Um, their position is that they feel that they do indeed have at least a uh, contractual obligation to provide the appropriate uh, environment for the repairs. If not, um, and they're still in the position that they may be on the hook for the actual cost. Now, I agree with you, Les. I'm not sure I read the contract the same way, but I. I, I mean, I, I would hope that the city of Bloomington is uh, doing their due diligence because they're talking taxpayer dollars mm -hmm. as well. But so. if you're, they're saying that they don't have the money, Adam said they don't have the money, so it's easy for them to say, oh, well, <laughs> you know, that's we a good way to make them. Either. We're not budgeted to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, we're in the same boat. Yeah. And, we have a lot you know, of it's easy budget. for them to say, well, and okay, and, and that's what, you know, they, I'm sure they would want us to just go away. You and know, that, we're dealing with an entity that has not been at all forthcoming with us or with this with CBU for yeah. that matter. all the more reason that I, I mean, think we that's ought to fight. what irritates me correct yeah. Michael we are your changes in this agreement yes. uh, you know I would I would want to find out more information John she said John tried to call me and I I, I evidently missed a call or, or, or whatever but uh, I will contact uh, John shell and find out what the cost is for the coffer dams and maybe you we can't bid that until you know exactly what you need, though. I mean, well, we can have them. We'll have the company go out there and look at the. Uh, so, so that's a question. Like, let's ask the the railroad to give us some. We have to know what they need. A detailed scope of their work. If, yeah, if we if we could if we could. That's the only way you can quote it. Find a contractor that will build the coffer dams, that the Wisconsin company will will work in these dams and use the CBU pumps to pump those coffer dams out and then move them from, from trussle to trussle, um, then the lake stays the same. And then we, we come October or whenever, then we decide on whether or not we're going to do a three foot drawdown or a drawdown or, or not a drawdown. Is kind of my <coughs> stance on and, it. If, if and our agreement, though, here is it only has to be two feet. Two feet, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. And now, only from September 20 to October 20, barring acts of God and 
Yeah, I, I, it's just such an iffy situation. Mm -hmm. If we'd have lowered it in March, exactly when they wanted us to, it would have been a mm -hmm. toast. We had a, a one foot change in the lake. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. within two or three days of that. <laughs> Why do you think we spent all that time in meetings trying to say, look, I know. this is not, yeah. So, yeah. so no, it, it, uh, it, it would have been a disaster. So mm -hmm. I am remembering that, and I'm grateful, because we could, have be, we could be sitting here now with this going on and yeah. into mm -hmm. August. Right. So we're Not even dredging in three weeks. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. let's keep that as a, some perspective. But, no, I, I'm not happy about the lake being shut down from September 20th to October 20th, but it was all that was offered at mm -hmm. that time, and I thought we could try to work through some other solutions. I, Didn't I the still, IU people tell us that, that they have, isn't there a fall rowing program? They have practices out there. Yeah, I don't think they host they, don't, they, they host some scrimmages. In fact, I have one of their rowers in my class, and I asked her about it just today. And, and she said, yeah, that they'll be wanting to do stuff until about um, you know, mid-October mm -hmm. or late October. Adam, well, maybe, we oh, ought to, maybe we ought to have take another run at the IU people about Pressure. Some money. So, I uh, and the sailing club has a regatta yeah. the last weekend of, or the fourth weekend in September that we've had for over 50 uh, years. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, the sailing people would be affected. The IU sailing people would be affected. I've heard from that guy. <coughs> uh, you know, and all you folks on the upper end. Oh well, yeah, these you're done. Really you know, down. you're out of business. That's why I, I just I feel like we're being taken advantage of. You know, and I know if you've been reading my emails, but for the record, to make it official, I'd like to bring down my <laughs> list of concerns. I mean, I don't think the railroad was acting in good faith. I mean, they, lied, they flat out lied at the January meeting. They just kind of walked out of here, made no comment, and kind of thought, well, okay, you know, we'll deal with this in the fall. Next thing we know, they go to the city because they didn't get the answer they wanted from us. Okay. And then the news article comes out. Well, they spin it like it's some kind of problem between us and CBU when they're the problem, not us. That's and they have provided us actually absolutely no technical evidence of the extent of the, the damage or the, the need or the work and the urgency. And, you know, so right now, this whole thing is based on some guy's verbal hearsay, really. I mean, it's hearsay in my book that I want to see engineering uh, plans or whatever, or an engineering evaluation of what, what the problem is. You know, and, and they're not doing that. And is it due because they didn't inspect it properly? Should, if they had been inspecting it, would this not have happened, you know? I mean, is it their fault? Uh, you know, and they're offering none of that stuff. Um, so, I mean, I don't trust them at all. I mean, like if, you know, they say the extended date is such and such, well, what if they get in there and they go, oh, well, you know, sorry, but uh, there's yeah, going to need to be more work, or, hey, yeah, by the way, you need to drop it well, another two speeds. Yes. It's, 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 it's going to take twice as long as they say it is. You know it's going to do that. Right. It always does. And then, to me, the city hasn't acted in good faith either because the folks go to the city. Next thing we know, at least the way I heard the story, was they call up Adam and tell him to go open the gate. Well, they have no authority to do that. You, they're not your boss, you know, and did not coordinate with us one bit. So again, the article says, oh, we've got a good relationship. That's not an example of a good relationship. I think we need to fight this thing, you know, because uh, I just think it's not right. I feel like we're being taken advantage of and we're being railroaded. <laughs> you have worked hard at that. <laughs> and I know it's going to cost us in, in legal fees and stuff, but, you know, and, and maybe the monetary loss won't be that much but you know come on I mean there, there's the recreational value that's why we're there I want to use it like in in you know in yeah. October exactly. and September and and do all you folks in the upper end do you really want to be cut off I mean yeah. you're gonna be out of business you know you won't be able to get out and and so the railroad can save a few bucks I mean it's not right it's just definitely not right, and I think as a matter of principle, we have to stand Perhaps up we should both to the city and, and the railroad, and point. not be intimidated. I think we need their contractor back, and I know mm -hmm. it's Wisconsin, but I, I think we need to know from the contractor if these coffer dams will work, and then it comes down to who's going to pay for the well, coffer dams. The guy doesn't have to come down here. We have perfectly good, uh, you know, computers access to any information that they want to send to us. We can read it. So they we just contact the railroad and have them right. We, have we, their we need more information I, about okay. the, the length of the, the. I would say, 
and we'll I would I think this is a great idea I think we need to go through CBU to right. do that I okay agree. Yeah. Um, I think we need to go back to Vic Kelson and say, Well, hey, someone is making an urgency push on Adam. And yeah. who is that? The city of Bloomington or the CBU? The um, essentially, what, what the attorney has said is that this gives us indemnification. So we've been asked to draw it on the lake. We said no. Essentially, this gives us indemnification if that trust were to come down and a train was there. It is saying this, that they agreed. This just covers our butt. They agreed to put to push it out. If we if we do not have a contract and we decide to fight him, and if something does happen, then ultimately they can come to us and say we were we were not working with them. We we're dragging out the process. Um, that that's really the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. um, as far I don't think we're getting any information and from this, the railroad. And this protects us if the train falls off the trestle now. Yeah. Until between now, until September September. September yeah, between now and September 20th. Yeah, between now and September 20th. I don't think anything from the railroad. I don't smile as much if we're as not I used to when I this, say that. Uh, if we're not going to sign this, ultimately, I think we stop using our attorney and spending money on that, and we wait for them to do something legal, and then we react. Or else we're just going to spend money on our attorney continuously. Well, I, um, I disagree with <laughs> signing this because yeah, this says no. that if normal weather conditions prevail, the drawdown will occur no later than yeah, September we're, 20th. We're, we're committing to this. It's, it's yes. Yeah. yeah, it's a commitment. So, yeah, I don't think that's a um, But if we don't commit and that train falls off that trestle, we could be on the hook for something. Yeah, well, I, I think we, could, we have to fight that out. I mean, you know, we'd say, okay, let's see your monitoring plan. You know, how often did you monitor? It's not our fault your train fell in. One of the concerns that I have uh, is based on, on some of the previous information that, that's been discussed is that legally we don't have a particularly strong case. Right. I mean, we've been told that. Mm -hmm. um, which mean, and I absolutely don't want to see the lake lowered. So I mean, I, I'm, this isn't me defending the railroad or the city or anyone else. My preference is that that we be able to tell them to go take a flying leap. But the reality is, from a from a legal standpoint, it, we do not have a very strong case from everything that we've been told, um, and. That makes me a little bit concerned about fighting too hard because I think we've probably already overplayed our hand in, in some ways. In that, I mean, I think we we got a better result so far than what our hand would suggest that we should be able to do. Um, I I don't I'm not opposed to trying to get more information and and I definitely would love to see us be able to go the coffer dam route. So I'm, I'm not opposed to any of the discussions going here, but. I do believe that we're probably heading down a track that if we start getting into, you know, let's make them sue us, let's go a litigation route, we're probably going to be spending a lot of money for not a lot of gain. Uh, and so that's my only word of caution based on the information that I've received. Can we right tell now. them we, would, we can't, we would like to sign this but we need more information about the copper dam I, I, I possibility I, from the railroad I mean you know get a, a, another option I, I, I what I would say is we would be willing to sign this if we had detailed information about what these repairs are uh, what the what is the scope of the repair how long time frame. do they, yeah, what's, what's the real time frame? Um, and if we then need to get real estimates of what would coffer dams cost, what, would, what other alternatives might there be, and how much those cost before we can make a, a really good decision. And we don't, unfortunately, have a lot of time. Correct. But that, that I, I don't disagree with you, Michael. I I think I think we've been really lucky so far. I don't and either. I'll never With know the exception, uh, at the January meeting it was a foot and a half, and then at the private meeting it was two and a half. Right. I don't think they really know. I I, I think that's probably true. And well, wasn't so, it CBU that said three feet? Yeah, they came. I mean, they kind of. So, I think yeah, it's one and a half, two and a half. What is it? I don't think it is. We know we know that coffer dams work. Yeah. John Shell sat right here in one of these chairs, and. You know, he was dying to say, no, no, build coffer dams. Mm -hmm. The engineer from Wisconsin had no answer. Mm -hmm. and, he, and that's what they would do if it was in 
any other place. That's I mean, right. That, right. that is that's uh, a fact. So this, is the, this is the quickest, cheapest, mm -hmm. fastest right. way for them. This is right. not for us, but right. this is for them. Well, and that, and but that's it's also CBU because mm -hmm. there's well, they can't we can't put it. It's a money it's, issue. It's the it's money. CBU. Can we put it back on CBU? CBO said we don't have money. Well, we said well we don't have any money. Which is your idea? I say we well, go back you to the CBU. See, I I would go back to CBU, and I would go back uh, uh, to Indiana University, and I I know they don't have as big a stake in this in the fall as they did in the spring, but they also have money. I'll I'll be blunt. Um, well, your regatta, yes. your regatta people. We, we would love to get those people to be pissed off too here. Well, we are. Okay. <laughs> so that's why we're here. Okay. And we're not pissed okay. off. No, that's it would okay. It'd be very disappointing that after 55 years we have to skip the year. Yeah. yeah sure. Sure. So we well, don't get that. And our uh, best sailing is September and October. Well, and sure. we're, we've already talked about this too um, amongst us that, that we, this is the best time of the year to be on the lake is right. September and October. I mean, it's just the best. And, Adam, it seems to me that maybe you and I need to go back to Vic yeah. Kelson um, ASAP because I, I will say that when this was offered after we had our meeting, I was thrilled to get it, uh, but I'm not hearing the support of the board that I no. had imagined I would have, and I understand it, and I don't want the lake drawn down either. So I think the next thing we do is you and I set up a meeting with Vic Kelson and try to and the see if we can see, get these see what we can find uh, out about this information gets, gathered yeah, and, get and some tell them what we want to do and, and then have I, help us. I also yeah. think we need to get some real estimates on what the actual yep. costs yeah. would be. Yep, and we need to do that really soon for different yeah. well, for coffer dam or for yeah, coffer dams okay. or yes. but I also okay. from now on feel we need a, yeah. one of the other okay. options okay. wasn't it that yes. was yes. to like block the, the culvert block. down there and pump that out yeah that seems like a lot of pumping yeah, yeah <laughs> that's a lot of pumping up. but I, but what how much would it cost? The copper dam is the, is the best but I, I still think we need to push though for some sort of engineering documentation yes. once again this whole thing we're we're going to inconvenience hundreds and hundreds of people on some guy's statement. I mean, that is not a good yeah, way to do business. Just no, because the railroad guy says, yeah, we need to fix it, like, okay, let's see some verification of that. I mean, that's not asking too much. You well, wouldn't let your car be fixed like that, would you, Les? I, nope. I will tell you, though, Les, that we've asked and asked and asked, and we keep getting, well, then they I won't think, tell us. They, well, so I, I don't know how you... Well, then too bad. Yeah. The yeah. only thing that I, I would court. agree on is changing the September date to an October date. I could live with the middle of October. And, and change that to October 20th, and, and then the board or, or some, somewhere yeah, near. Talk to them, yeah. and, and put October, if you put October 20th in there, I think that you may get a consensus. Mm -hmm. but that, that'd be that, great. Would, okay. that would that'd change be That would change it dramatically. Well, we can try we that. Because that might be, if, the, if, it, if everything, You're talking a month. the costs are yeah. prohibitive. So. Unless they don't work in the cold. Still, they're still running trains on it, so I mean, right. yeah. hopefully yeah. it's not going to go down in a month. Okay, I think we've probably hashed this long enough. Uh, everybody in agreement with Adam uh, yeah, and, right. and us so going back, and we'll me and Pamela go to the <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Right. Let's see if we can negotiate that October twentieth. I'll just tell them I was wrong, and I thought the board would go for it. And <laughs> well, you didn't know about the regatta. Well, I, yeah, I was just I was just grateful because I saw our whole season going down the tube. So yeah, I mean, we'll work on it. Who picked the September twentieth day? Probably. They asked. They, they said after they would wait till after Labor Day, mm -hmm. and I said I. Think that we could possibly consider that. Once again, it was after all of that okay. mess. So, the city, but the city let's told go back. The mm -hmm. What's that? The city told the railroad company September well, The city doesn't run our lake. It's they right. need to come that's to true. the make that's, that's, that's okay. my problem. About the lake. <laughs> all right, that's what we'll do. <laughs> well, we, we will report back as soon. They gave us the management of it. All right, we'll report back as soon as we can. Um, all right, well, me and right. him, we'll be going to the city on that. Thank you, guys. <laughs> let's just stay here uh, in this building, Adam. <laughs> Let's Number get, you know, get you guys uh, like quarters. Yeah. <laughs> Number D fishing tournament. I actually had one of my gatehouse staff come to me. Um, him and his friends are members of the 4-H club for Monroe County. I guess they do a lot of stuff at the Boys and Girls Park. They have been talking about running a charity fishing tournament to raise money for the 4-H club. And they have asked us to waive the $50 tournament fee for them for that. And I really don't have any problem. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. And that's for a $100 fee. 
Yeah, hundred. Sorry, about hundred dollar. Oh well, then no. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll make more than. We'll still have the boat sales. I was gonna say, is there a per boat fee? Yeah, they'll still be paying for the daily boat passes. Okay. So if they get ten boats, we're making one hundred fifty bucks right there. Right. So. All right, it's been moved and seconded that we waive the fishing tournament 4-H fee. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Geese. Oh, yeah, on this. The goslings this, this are is out you. already. The goslings are out. You didn't kill them all. They're did out. I not get them all? You did not get them all. <laughs> it's early. And a, and a it good number early, of them yeah. have moved over to Lakeview Hills. Really. That's sweet. <laughs> definitely a warm spring so they started laying early um, early April I went out to the islands and uh, hit a couple other little places treated 17 nests um, you're only required to report the amount of nests to the um, to the state and there's a lot of eggs so I don't count the eggs um, but they average about six to eight per nest so um, you know you're looking at probably at least a hundred goslings that hopefully won't hatch and um, make their home Lake Lemon because they do kind of come back to the same place every year where they're born. So hopefully we can just keep the young ones out and the older ones just keep getting older. Mm -hmm. Thank you for, again, risking your life every year. Too. Actually, yes. one more thing I was going to say for a new business. I've been approached by a barbecue truck and a snow cone truck. People are very interested in coming out to the beach um, in the summertime. Um, and I've talked to them. I mean, obviously they'd have to have their health permits and, and some type of insurance. And we were talking with them, and initially we were thinking, you know, maybe like fifty dollars a day, that'd be like seven extra cars per day. It's not enough. I'm um, just to start. Out. I don't think we can get them to come out if they like go oh, really? hundred. Oh really? So start off. How much? Uh, but if people are interested in this, and that's something yeah, we'd that's be interested true. in, I would, um, I would go to the, the attorney and have us draft up a contract. They have to have you know the Monroe County health permits, have yeah. to have some form of insurance with us as additional insureds, and I think it'd be a really, really good benefit Where for the people Where there. Probably um, kind of right between the shelter house and the bathhouse along okay. that along right. that right there. Um, I mean, if they're here for the weekend, hundred bucks. I mean, that's like yeah, got to clean up their, they gotta, fourteen they gotta extra cars. Take care of their trash. Yeah. You, you got to have all that in there too. Um, so if people are just in that, I will go ahead and try mm -hmm. to. We'll talk about the fee next month. But okay, sounds like a good thing. All right, like it. All right, um, you guys have been very patient. Public comment. Uh, I'd ask that if you have a comment, please come to the uh, podium and introduce yourself and fire away, gently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be gentle. I haven't been in a long time, but IU has an auction in April, and I was there one time buying a 15 person van for about 10,000 less than any place you, and they were giving away a dump truck. They couldn't get rid of it. So the IU auctions, they, they maintain their, their vehicles really well, and they're still having them. When you said dump truck, I remember looking at that dump truck and going, What can I do with the dump truck? <laughs> <laughs> $500. <laughs> That's the first thing. Um, and I uh, mentioned to Adam that I'm going to be speaking to the Benton Township about getting our meetings back there. Get our meetings? Oh, okay. I think you could try and you know, be just a possibility. Well, we would have to make that decision as a board. Of course. That's not for any one person to say. Well, we have to ask them. Yeah. And then they ban us? Yes. So we have to go to them and mm -hmm. ask them. I would like to go to them and ask them. Could I ask you why? Uh, we've been pretty happy with this setup. We think the acoustics are better. We think just the chairs are better. Yeah, I, 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 take, I, I just I hate driving into town when I don't have to. Luckily, right today I was working remodeling a house a mile from here, but I can't stand driving into town. It's just such a big waste of gas and pollution. If you live at the lake. Or if you're coming to your lake house and you have to come out here, I wonder how the general public, maybe we can we can the maybe public. call the public. Yeah. Sure. I just I hate, I, I can't make it to meetings in here. I work at the lake, I live at the lake, and it's a lake meeting to be all the way in here. And the Brown County people have to drive from the Okay. Okay. So I'm just saying I would like to go and appeal to them to see if they would consider letting us come back there. Let us know. Someone that was here that had to leave and was saying, I like it when there's a table in front of us, too. Um, oh, um, another thing about this railroad thing that you could throw into the mix if you want to, is there are businesses that depend on the livelihood of the lake that would be affected by this? That's true. One is me with my guest houses. People won't want to stay at a guest house, so they can't. The first thing they ask is, do you have a dock? And that's the reason they come to the lake. And the porthole, 
um, it gets a lot of business from the fishermen, and I know my guest house people all go to Fort Hall. So that those are two in the marina for sure. Those are that that needs to be mentioned that you're going to be really That's affecting true. the businesses. And I know in the conversations that took place to prevent it from happening this spring, that was mentioned very prominently as the impact that it would have not only on the freeholders, but, but the businesses the lake around the lake. That was very yeah. important. And then I think it was IU that, that helped seal the deal because mm -hmm. I'm not sure they really cared about us, but yeah. they didn't no. care about mm -hmm. IU. Yeah. And then I still just want to put a bug in people here about having events and festivals at Little Point, maybe when our foundation gets together. But a friend of mine just mentioned that she just got back from California to this amazing kite festival. And everybody flew kites and they made kites and they got everybody to come out to this park that hadn't come out to the park. And she just happened to be here with her grandkids and said it was just such a neat thing. Yeah. Yeah. I hadn't heard of a kite festival, but boy, Little Point sure is the place to mm -hmm. yeah, kite. That's true. Yeah. So I just cool. still think there's a lot of things, events we can do like that that will bring more people and more money to life. Okay. But don't forget the dump truck. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> Hello, Malcolm McClure. I just wanted to make a couple of public comments about this meeting we're working on. Um, first of all, to the people. I want to make this as useful to you people as, as we possibly can. I don't, this is not going to be a, an opportunity to bring you out and bore you. We're going to give you new information, and I want you to talk it up, okay? And so I'm heavy into the... Um, advertising of this, and I don't want to soft sell it. I want to have some punch yeah. to it, because mm -hmm. this affects everybody, and they're gonna to wanna to know things about, you know, is, how is this going to affect us, how, what's it gonna cost, and so on and so on. So I would stick with some kind of a, um, a catchphrase that, that gets that point across. That's why I chose don't lose our lake. It might happen, yeah, it might happen. So, you know, we don't wanna just soft sell it. I agree. Can we get an article on the Indy Star? Would that be a good? That, that would be a good idea. idea. Yeah, I mean, because that. there's a lot of people that live that you know live yeah. up there, and, and Harold Times. Harold too. Times. Yeah. So anyway, there. in addition to the door hangers and the signs, I will we'll put something on the website that's going to reference everything back to that because that's where the real information will be up. Driving by, you can only see a sign for seconds. And, and one thing I didn't say I like is that. when we send and we need to talk about sending the KCI report to all freeholders, we need to, that needs to have the invitation to the meeting on it. So so we should do that tomorrow or Monday. We're going to be sending now a newsletter tomorrow that has the information for the meeting, so we could go ahead and just attach that report if the board is fine with that. Is, is that all right with you That's, and the board? I think so. I think but I, yeah, but again, fine. to Malcolm's point, we it can't be that dear freeholder, please come to this meeting. It's It's got to be a, we need you, so, yeah. so right. we can talk. And, uh, and one of the things, tracks. what I would recommend is, um, if you're gonna try to get any of the newspapers to, to cover it, we probably have better luck with the Bloomington paper than the Star. Oh, but, I know, yeah. yeah. Um, but um, put together a, a press release, and then I can provide the contact information that I have, at least for, uh, Bloomington Great. To, uh, to help with that. Great. Do you fax that to all the media? Do you have a one of those, Michael? Uh, no, I, um, our staff does. Oh, yeah, they just put it in there and it faxes it to all the media. Um, yeah. yeah, that's okay. We had that at the fire yeah. department. Sorry, who's the website contact? Either one of us. Either one. Okay. I'll send you a little blurb and hopefully that everything will tie together. All right. Thanks, Great. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you. Malcolm. Anybody else? I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> She's a font of information. Not at all. I have questions tonight. Uh, Susan Snyder Salmon is my name. Um, I want to echo some of the things that Les was saying and just weigh in a little bit on the whole railroad thing. And I, I don't have the, the understanding of the legal background of the contract, so I'm, I'm just going on what I heard tonight, particularly from Pam in terms of asking for information that hasn't come. Um, my, my basic understanding is this is a public utility. They are running trains through public areas, and I believe that there is some sort of authority to do that that comes from the state or, or the federal level or whatever it is. It seems to me that there must be some requirement 
that certain standards are kept. And, and Les mentioned this, and I want to come back to where I'm going with it and as I jumble around a little bit, because I'm just thinking it through as I talk, is has there been a written request for information or it has it been verbal? Verbal. As far verbal. as you know. Verbal. Okay. So the first thing you do to get attention and to move up the ladder of due diligence is to put things in writing. So I would recommend a review of the situation and to put certain things in writing that, that and I'm going to fumble this and it's going to be a very um, non-technical thing, but hello, we don't know, A, if you have followed your own due diligence, what was, and, and, you, and this was brought out earlier, what were you supposed to do? Show us the records that you did what you were supposed to do. I am uh, tickled by the innuendo in this is that we're protected from a train falling over? Excuse me, where have you been since 1952? And I think we have to ask for where have you been, what have you done, and why all of a sudden is this in an emergency? Oh, well, it was an emergency in January, and now we're willing to wait till Labor Day, but we're still going to threaten you with a train falling off the trestle? I'm finding that a very hard argument to, to take, because there's no information, there's no specifics. If they didn't do what they were required to do as a utility, then they are obligated to pay to fix their error. There's a lot of mystery here, a lot of question, and I think that either City of Bloomington doesn't want to deal with it, um, or they, again, they forget that we are theirs and, and we are theirs, and, but it works both ways. But I think that there's some missing pieces um, that we need to step up and ask for documentation, as, as has been mentioned. And I think you had a really good list. Um, so like I say, I'm fumbling around with it, but I think it's critical before we put our resources at risk and our constituencies at risk, that we make this entity, which is a public use entity, accountable for what they have done or not done so that it can be properly evaluated as to whether or not they have done their due diligence and if they are culpable for any costs. And I think any good attorney would follow that same pathway. And I think that we need to either change our attorney if our attorney doesn't recommend that, uh, or investigate uh, at least a written request of information. Well, we're supposed to sign something for the railroad, right? That's what this this thing is. Well, do we have something from the from CBU that covers our behind? This is this between is all three. three. Yeah. This is between yeah. all three. Okay. Okay. City, it holds railroad, nobody, nobody at, at risk. Yeah, so it's harm. covering everybody. So but I just, I, the, the, I tickled by the innuendo that a train could fall off the track in the threat. Texas. <laughs> I don't threat. think so. What about the due diligence of the mm -hmm. railroad company over that course of time? What should they have done? What well, the railroad, they have done? the railroad has never said that. Well, that's what they need to cough up and say. They're a public utility subject yeah. to federal and state We've law. We've said it, and certainly the city of Bloomington so, utilities yeah. has said it. And then it needs to be in writing and, and, and recorded, because right now it's just... You know, yeah. Yeah. they're making stuff up. Let's see the facts. They're, they're doing it yeah. to threaten us. Right. So can we get a commitment to write this letter? Or do we need to have a motion for that? I mean, I, I, I've been advocating that all along. Okay, and well, that's my say. Please come We formally <laughs> write the city and the railroad and say, we need this information. In I order think, to make I think that should go through our, via our attorney. Is she right. willing? Well, have we asked her to do that? I guess not exactly. We've asked her to be a part of this, but we haven't asked her directly no, that, to do that. Mm -hmm. so do it, it, it needs to come from the, from the lawyer because they're the only ones that have a shot. Like Would you agree with that, Les, that it should come As long as it comes from somebody, but you know, I think, I think we, we should have a chance it. to look at it so we'd be sure that we're asking for the right stuff. Okay. Uh, you right. Know. And I, I would uh, still urge us to continue the, the conversation. Yeah. With the, Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Sure. I mean, I mean, in addition to that, I don't that. think it hurts to have the letter. But. Okay. All right. We'll work on that too. Do we need a motion for that? I don't think so. Okay. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Um, I want to make sure we mention the May sixth workday. Adam, give me the time. Yes, we're moving the, the workday to the following day. That'll actually be in the newsletter coming out tomorrow. Uh, just so happened to fall on the regatta. The boss is going to be. Pouring rain. Um, so we'll be met for the next week and we'll have um, some of the job listings in there, what we're looking to do. 9 a.m. Um, start, is that right? Yeah, 9 a.m. start. So that's um, a week from Saturday. 
What yeah. tools do you want people to bring? Do you know what? Can we got we to go through. We'll have to go and look, and um, we can we'll include that in the email. I'm not all sure. We got actually a lot of painting done. Um, Bill Railing, who helped us out before painting, we actually just I just hired him to come in and got the bathrooms look really good. Nice. Um, so we'll be doing some final finishing touches, like the trim along the bottom, which would be a good work day thing. And um, we'll have to we'll have to go through. It's kind of been we've been in a rush right now, and honestly, I really have to put a a ton of time. Yeah. And we're going to say something about, you know, let us know if you plan to come, because some years we have a lot of people, some years we don't have very many, so it's kind of hard for us to plan, mm -hmm. you know, supplies and jobs, and, you know, it'll take us a couple of days to get things in line, and then, you know, if we don't get the, those jobs done, it's kind of... Waste. Yeah, yeah, so we'll ask for RSVPs. Last year, about <coughs> okay, the next meeting uh, will be here, May 25th, so it's a Thursday night before Memorial Day. I'm coming to stay in the whole time. I would encourage you to do likewise. Start it, start the weekend early, and then we will switch over to the summer meetings at the shelter house come June. Um, so thanks for coming. Uh, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Have a good night. Safe travels. <laughs>